Clairvoyance and Occult Powers by William Walker Atkinson, read by Anonymous Traveler for Intellectual Exercise. The following section consists of the principle of developing concentration and also several core exercises to develop occult powers. However, these exercises are only useful when you practice regularly. So make sure you listen to this whole thing and practice over and over and over until achieving fluency. A well-known authority on psychic development has well said, occasional flashes of clairvoyance sometimes come to the highly cultured and spiritual-minded man, even though he may never have heard of the possibility of training such a faculty. In his case, such occasions usually signify that he is approaching that stage in his evolution when these powers will naturally begin to manifest themselves. Their appearance should serve as an additional stimulus to him to strive to maintain that high standard of moral purity and the mental balance without which clairvoyance is a curse and not a blessing to its owner. Between those who are entirely unimpressionable and those who are in full possession of clairvoyant power, there are many intermediate stages. Students often ask how this clairvoyant faculty will first be manifested in themselves, how they may know when they have reached the stage at which its first faint foreshadowing are beginning to be visible. Cases differ so widely that it is impossible to give to this question any answer that will universally applicable. But the first step is the development of a sharp and powerful concentration, and here is the basic principle to follow. Number one, the attention attaches more easily to interesting rather than uninteresting things. Therefore, select some interesting thing to study and analyze by concentrated thought. Number two, the attention will decline in strength unless there is a variation in the stimulus. Therefore, Keep up the power of a concentration by either changing the object you are observing or by discovering some new properties, qualities, or attributes in it. Number three, the thing you wish to shut out of a consciousness can best be shut out by your concentration upon some other thing because the attention can dwell only upon one thing at a time, if focused upon that one thing. Number four, the power of applying your attention, steady and undissipated, to a single object is a mark of a strong will and a superior mental discipline, and the weak mind cannot do this. Therefore, in cultivating concentrated attention, you are really strengthening your mind and will. Number five, to develop concentrated attention, you must learn to analyze, analyze, and analyze the thing upon which you are bestowing concentrated attention. Therefore, proceed by selecting an object and analyzing it by concentrated attention, taking one part after another, one by one, until you have analyzed and mastered the whole object. Give it the same attention that the lover gives his loved one, the musician his favorite composition. 
And when you have accomplished this, you have mastered concentration and will be able to apply the mind one-pointed upon anything you wish, physical or astral, and consequently will have no trouble in shutting out disturbing impressions. Number six, learn to concentrate on the physical plane and you will be able to concentrate on the astral plane as well. By the one who has mastered concentration, trances and the abnormal psychic state will not be needed. The needle-pointed mind is able to pierce the astral veil at will, while the blunt-pointed mind is defeated by the astral envelope which is very tough and unyielding. Now, let's focus on the seven basic exercises to develop occult powers. Exercise 1. When walking down the street behind a person, make him turn around in answer to your mental command. Select some person who does not seem to be too much rushed or to visit, select some person who seems to having nothing particular on his mind. Then desire honestly that he shall turn around when you mentally call to him to do so. At the same time, picture him as turning around in answer to your call. And at the same time, concentrate your attention and thought firmly upon him. After a few moments of a preparatory thought, send him the following message, silently of course, with as much force, positiveness, and vigor as possible. Hey, you, there, turn around and look at me. Hey, turn around, turn around at once. While influencing him, Fix your gaze at the point on his neck where the skull joins it, right at the base of the brain, in the back. In a number of cases, you will find that the person will look around as if someone had actually called him aloud. In other cases, he will seem puzzled and will look from side to side as if seeking someone. After a little practice, you will be surprised how many persons you can affect in this way. Exercise 2. When in a public place, such as a church, concert, or theater, send a similar message to someone seated a little distance in front of you. Use the same method as in the first exercise and you will obtain similar results. It will seem clear to you at first to notice how the other person will begin to fidget and move around in his seat and finally glance around as if to see what is causing him the disturbance. You, of course, will not let him suspect that it is you, but Instead, we'll gaze calmly ahead of you and pretend not to notice him. Exercise 3. This is a variation of the first exercise. It is practiced by sending to a person approaching you on the street or walking ahead of you in the same direction. A command to turn to the right or to the left as you prefer. You will be surprised to see how often you will be successful in this. Exercise 4. This is a variation of the second exercise. It is practiced by sending to a person seated in front of you in a public place the command to look to the right or to the left as you prefer. Do not practice on the same person too long after succeeding at first. It is not right to torment people, remember. 
Exercise 5. After having attained the fluency in the foregoing exercises, you may proceed to command a person to perform certain unimportant motions, such as rising or sitting down, taking off his hat, taking out his handkerchief, laying down a fan, umbrella, etc. Exercise 6. The next step is to command the persons to say something particular word having no important meaning, to put word in his mouth while talking to him, wait until the other person pauses as if in search of a word, and then suddenly, sharply, and forcefully put the word into his mouth, silently of course, in a very susceptible person, well under your psychic control, you may succeed in suggesting entire sentences and phrases to him. Exercise 7. This is the summit of psychic influencing and of course is the most difficult. But you will be surprised to see how well you will succeed in many cases after you have acquired the neck and the habit of sending the psychic message. It consists of commanding the person to obey the spoken command or request that you are about to make to him. This is the art and the secret of the success of many salesmen and others working along the lines of influencing other people. It is acquired by beginning with small things and gradually proceeding to greater and still greater things. At this point, I should warn you that all the best occult teachings one student against using this power for base and improper purposes, etc. Such practices tend to react and rebound against the person using them. Beware against using psychic or occult powers for improper purposes. The psychic laws punish the offender, just as do the physical laws.